So I've had the Pixel 8 for roughly a month now, or to put it in other terms, roughly twice the length of an Elon Musk relationship. And for the majority of that time, apart from when I was reviewing the OnePlus Open, I've had my SIM slapped in there, using it as my full-time smartphone. Now at 699 quid, the Pixel 8 is cheaper than most other flagships, but is the camera as good as always? Does that Tensor G3 get a wee bit burny? How is the battery life, etc, etc? Well, I'm glad you asked, because here's my one month Pixel 8 review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, first up, I just got to say, I love how adorably compact the Pixel 8 is. This gives me happy joy joy feelings deep in my tummy whenever I pick this thing up. It's basically the same size as my other favorite compact smartphone of 2023, the Asus Zenfone 10. It's just a smidge smaller, but there's bugger all in it really. And the hand feel is especially good as those corners and the edges are sloped to just neatly fit your palms. So definitely Jesus tier hand feel right here. Love it. As always with Google's blowers, that camera bump stretches the full width of the phone. And that's definitely a good thing because when it's resting on a desk, it means it doesn't wobble about all over the place. It also doubles up as a handy wee ledge that you can rest your point and finger on like so. Makes it even more comfortable to use this thing one handed. It also does help a bit with the grip because frankly this thing is super slippery. And Google's design does feel pleasingly premium. You've got a matte aluminium frame sandwiched between Gorilla Glass Victus 1 back and front. And that arse end is glossy as always, unlike the Pro model. And usually I do prefer a matte finish to a glossy, shiny arse because I find that this sort of surface usually gets all greasy and fingerprinty when you've been handling it for a while. But actually, that Pro model does get proper smudgy after just a few minutes. I was here on this shiny arse, I found that actually it's a pretty good job of hiding all your fingerprinty badness. And it's probably helped along by the fact that I've got this darker olive model, which certainly does a good job of masking the smudges. And that's not to say that the Pixel 8 doesn't get greasy, but in oily terms, it's more of a Colin Farrell rather than a Johnny Depp. And yes, before you point it out in the comments, I would perform arcane satanic rituals to have either of those guys' hair. In fact, I actually used to have slicked back hair well back in the day, back before Facebook basically permanently etched all of our worst life decisions onto the bowels of the internet for all time. Sometimes it's actually pretty good being old. Now the regular Victus glass finish isn't as advanced as what you get on the Pixel 8 Pro, but so far there's only a few very light scratches located near the bottom of the back end of the Pixel 8 and on that display. They are proper weenie, you do have to go actually looking for them because they're not obvious at all, but it has only been one month and if you are planning on keeping your Pixel 8 for years and years then highly recommend slapping a screen protector on at the very least. Oh, and it's fully IP68 water and dust resistant as well, so I've happily kicked back in a nice hot bubbly bath and caught up on some anime shenanigans, no worries whatsoever. So as far as the display goes, very few complaints. I mean, the bezels surrounding that screen couldn't really be described as skinny, but they're not so chunky that they're offensive to the eyes or anything. And that in-display optical fingerprint sensor is fine as long as your hands are fairly dry. Any moisture there, and the chances are this sensor just won't be happy. You've always got face unlock as a backup, but likewise this doesn't function too well in dim light. So basically if you like candlelit baths, then you're going to have to remember your pin. And no, I promise I don't have candlelit baths while watching anime by myself. That would be pretty weird even for me. Now because this is a Google blower, you naturally have that tasty fresh Android 14 experience right out of the box. Plus the added reassurance of seven years of OS and security updates. So basically, as long as you don't f up the Pixel 8, it'll happily see you right through to 2030. And frankly, if I make it through to 2030, I'll count that as a personal victory. Now Android 14 very much looks and feels like Android 13, massive shock. But you do have a fair few new features chucked in there and plenty of updates to existing stuff. Our great mate AI can now spaff out a unique and slightly batch bonkers wallpaper on demand, although this does still feel far too restrictive. Or it can also live translate to English in a variety of situations if you never learned any foreign speak beyond a courteous Uno Biro Grande Por Favore. And while I haven't personally used them here on the Pixel 8, the fresh new safety features seem like a genuinely thoughtful and useful inclusion, like pretty much all the Pixel shenanigans you'll find. Everything apart from that temperature sensor on the Pro, which just like, Google, what have you been smoking, mate? Because you don't get that temperature sensor here on the regular Pixel 8, and it's been a huge miss. 
Because, you know, with regular Pixel 8, I just have to recklessly throw my coffee down my throat and hope it's not hot enough to scold me because I can't accurately read its temperature first. And yes, a couple more new features are coming to the Pixel 8 before the year's end, including the Summarize tool, which should save you valuable time when browsing articles or sifting through transcriptions of your voice memos. But anyway, if you want a much closer look at all of those fresh new Android 14 features and updated bits, well, I've done a full Pixel 8 tips and tricks guide, which you can definitely go check out right now, or preferably after you've watched the whole of this review. And if I remember, I'll bung a link up above my shiny scalp here, but that's frankly not going to happen. Now, as for the everyday software experience here on the Pixel 8, well, unfortunately, there have been quite a few bugs. So, for instance, a couple of times when I've been in the car, Android Auto has suddenly decided they just can't be asked to work anymore. Usually, just as I'm about to tackle a particularly pant trouble and junction, fantastic fun. Sometimes apps don't entirely behave the way they're supposed to. I've had Deezer freeze up on me completely uh, once or twice, sometimes in the foreground, sometimes in the background. And one time when I tried to load up Google Maps, it basically just did this and nothing else. And anyway, hopefully Google will smash all these bugs in the next update or two and smooth things out. Because right now it kind of feels like the Pixel 8 has had one tequila slammer too many. And it's just kind of swaying on its feet, deciding whether or not to do a tactical puke. Oh, and the storage options suck as well. 128 gig base, come on, guys. Lots of mid-range and even budget smartphones are coming out with 256 gigs as standard now, so what the flipping F? Your only other option is a 256er here in the UK as well. There's no 512 gig option. And is there micro SD memory card support? Is there bollocks? You've also only got space for one physical SIM, but at least Google offers eSIM support on top of that. Now, as for that 6.1 inch 20 by 9 OLED display, well, that is still a highlight here on the Pixel 8. Now, Full HD plus 2400 by 1080 pixel resolution produces pin sharp visuals on a dinky screen this size. You got Full HDR streaming support as well, not Dolby Vision, HDR 10. This pumps out some crispy contrast and I love the bright, vibrant colors as well. And while the Pixel 8 may max out at a mere 2000 nit, certainly not as bright as the Pro, but it is still eye slappingly bright. I've had zero issues with visibility. And thus I've been trying to watch some Disney Plus stuff outdoors. I've found that that can be a bit murky at times. And that refresh rate scales from 60 hertz up to 120 hertz. And certainly on that max refresh, everything feels beautifully fluid. And as for the Pixel 8's stereo speakers, well, they're perfectly decent for a mini mobile like this. They're certainly loud enough when you max them out so I can clearly hear a video or a podcast while I'm smashing together some fried goodies in the kitchen. And that audio quality is absolutely fine as well. And I've had bugger all problems when streaming over Bluetooth absolutely fine to speakers and even headphones in really busy crowded areas out and about in London. Now when we turn to the subject of performance on a Pixel smartphones, that's where things start to get a bit nervy. And Pixel 8 is powered by yet another Tensor chipset, the Tensor G3. And I was backed here by 8 gigs of DDR5 RAM. And when it comes to just the general everyday performance, that Tensor G3 sadly isn't as nippy as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which you'll find in most of the flagship smartphones from this year. And that itself has now been replaced by the 8 Gen 3, which you'll find stuffed into flagships before the end of the year. However, that wee gripe aside, I felt that the everyday performance certainly here on the Pixel 8 has been absolutely fine. It's rare for this phone to, you know, sit and think about anything before doing it. Usually, you know, you tap an app, it just pops straight up. Multitasking is absolutely fine. It can run a fair few apps in the background. But gaming is where it all falls down a bit compared with some flagship rivals. That frame rate is noticeably weaker when you max out Genshin Impact's visuals, for instance. It's generally fine, but the Pixel 8 does stumble and judder occasionally. You're best off maybe lowering the graphic settings if you want a perfectly fluid frame rate at all times. And plus, Google's gaming mode is, to put it politely, still rather basic compared with what you get on quite a lot of other smartphones. And then, of course, there's the subject of overheating, because tensors of the past are notorious for getting hotter than the insides of a freshly baked Ginster's pasty. But personally, I've found that the Pixel 8 has been absolutely fine. It can get a little bit warm to the touch on occasions, but certainly compared with the thigh roasters of previous Pixel phones, it's nowhere near that bad. That said though, bear in mind I've been using it in the month of October. Let's see how the Pixel 8 handles a bit of British summertime next year, assuming we get a summertime. You actually get more than 15 minutes of f***ing sunlight in a day. And the connectivity's generally been fine on the Pixel 8 this past month, but occasionally it can just be a wee bit slow when you're waiting for a website to load or a podcast to download. This is all on mobile data. It's been fine on Wi-Fi. 
And I've got bugger all complaints when it comes to the battery life, which has well and truly exceeded my expectations. So you've got a 4,575 milliamp hour capacity battery crammed inside of that cute wee frame. And I found that's certainly a decent size considering how dinky this thing is. And in this entire time, I've been using the Pixel 8 with my SIM slapped in there. I've only managed to run it dry in a single day once. So for instance, take yesterday, I registered over six hours of screen on time. That includes a full hour of Skyping, which normally gobbles that juice up. Lots of video streaming, a few hours of background music and podcast streaming as well. And I still had over 10% battery remaining when I slapped this thing on the charger. And quite often by the time I finally slump face down on my pillow, I've still got around quarter charge left. So I certainly haven't been stressed at all by the Pixel 8 there. However, once again, the curse of the slow charging Google smartphones strikes. You've got 27 watt wired charging and 18 watt wireless charging. So if the Pixel 8 is almost fully drained, you plug it in, even with fast charging enabled, it'll still take you about an hour and a half to get a proper full battery again. And that is a real shame compared with some Chinese rivals which can fully charge in like 20 minutes from drain. So you, know, you can just bung a cable in them in the morning when you stagger up. By the time you've dragged a shaver across your face, brushed your teeth and everything, it's fully charged again. Whereas this bad boy, I usually just slap it on a wireless charging pad overnight. Thankfully, you've got that adaptive charging tech, so hopefully it won't balk the battery health over time. So let's finish up with a squint at the camera tech headed up here on the Pixel 8 by a 50 meg OctaPD camera with optical image stabilization. Now you do only have single zone autofocus here on the regular Pixel 8 compared with the multi-zone autofocus of the Pixel 8 Pro. Personally, I've found that the focus has been absolutely fine on this mini model. As long as you're not trying to shoot photos in like super ambient conditions, I'm talking like basement sex dungeon levels or a nightclub might be a slightly less disturbing thing I might have said just then instead. But yeah, when it's proper dark, the Pixel 8 can sometimes take a few seconds sort of mulling over what it is it's actually supposed to be focusing on. Besides that, this Mini Marvel is pretty much on a par with the Pro when shooting with that main 50 meg snapper. It's not really surprising as both Pixels boast the same image processing smarts courtesy of that Tensor G3 brain. For the most part, this produces crisp, natural looking images and copes beautifully with contrast. Although I have seen the occasional bit of saturation and artifacting in my photos, while portrait pics can also occasionally be surprisingly soft, which I certainly wasn't expecting from a Google smartphone. Here's once again hoping that a Google update sorts that out in a jiffy. And it's a shame that a few other features that you'll find on the Pixel 8 Pro are absent here on the regular Pixel 8. So there's no full on manual controls, you can't shoot raw images, and there's no high resolution mode as well, which is doubly a shame here on the Pixel 8 as there's no telephoto lens. So you can't shoot a nice 50 megapixel image and then just crop in. And yeah, that telephoto shooter has been a big miss here on the Pixel 8. This phone tops off at eight times zoom, and even then things get grainy when you punch in above the sort of two or three times mark. You've also got a more basic 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter on the Pixel 8, but this still does a fine job when you need a different angle. As for video, where you can shoot up to 4K Ultra HD home movies, you've got some decent stabilization on here and excellent audio capture too. Those vocals come through crisp and clear, even with a fair bit of background shindiggery. And on top of that, you can actually make vocals even clearer by hopping into the video editing tools and lowering the background noise. It's absolutely stunning stuff. And I tell you what, it is the editing tools on this thing that are truly addictive and really elevate that camera experience to top tier stuff. Again, it's a shame that the Pixel 8 won't be getting the night sight video mode that will be coming to the Pixel 8 Pro later in the year. But you've got that audio magic eraser tool and loads of nifty photo editing tools as well. It's like a piss easy version of Photoshop that just works far too well. Most of these new tools are AI led, like the creepy face swap tool. This can morph your family's faces so it actually looks like everyone's enjoying each other's company. You can shift people about, delete them from existence as always, all that good stuff. But anyway, definitely go check out my full in-depth Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro camera review for an in-depth look at the photo and video smarts, including all of those editing tools. Again, I'll try and remember to bung a link up there, but you know, don't go searching for it too hard. And before I forget, you've got a 10.5 meg selfie camera and it might lack the Pro model's autofocus, but I found it didn't struggle to produce sharp photos, even in quite cack lighting. And again, you can shoot up to 4K resolution video using that front-facing selfie cam. The mics are excellent. They pick up on your voice nice and clear, even if you're across the other side of a room doing a Skype or a Zoom, anything like that. So, great stuff.
And there you have it, my lovelies. That's what I reckon of Google's Pixel 8 flagship smartphone after a full month of having it stashed inside my pants, my bag, wherever. Now, yeah, there's certainly a few issues that still need sorting out with the general Android software experience and with that camera tech as well. Hopefully, they'll all be smoothed out nicely in the next update or two. And I'd say if you want a more compact handset, something similar to Samsung's Galaxy S23 or that Isuzu Zenfone 10, and you're not bothered about having the most powerful smartphone around, you should certainly consider it, especially at this sort of price. That's what I reckon. What about you guys? Have you been using the Pixel 8 yourself as your full-time smartphone? It'd be great to hear your own personal experiences down below, especially when it comes to the general Android software shenanigans. Have you been seeing lots of bugs and stuff as well, issues with the camera, etc.? Please do put subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.